Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And without wasting your time, when you add a keyframe to your video, you see keyframes showing up here on the Transform Properties window. But in this video, we are going to focus onto this keyframing panel option. So when you select the option right here, you are going to see something very, very interesting. Okay, let me start by showing you everything around this keyframing panel. By the way, let me adjust my layout so that I give the keyframing panel a bigger space. So, I think the first thing right here, I have to delete this keyframe so that I leave the keyframing panel empty and let you see everything from scratch. So right here, we have the timeline. As you can see right here, we have a duration count and the duration of the timeline always depends on the selected clip. And right here, you can zoom in your timeline and zoom out using these options right here. These are graphical options right here, which I'm going to explain just now. To move out of the keyframing panel, just select this option right here and you are out. And when you select it again, you are back. Now, when I add a transform keyframe right here, you are going to see keyframes lining downwards, like in this way. So this first keyframe right here is actually representing the x-axis of the scale. And the next one is the y of the scale again. And this third one is the x of the position, which is this one right here. And this one right here is the y-axis of the position. And of course, this one is the rotation. Now I move just a few frames like this and let me just increase the scale. As you can see, we have two key frames that are automatically added because we've only affected the scale. So let me say I just want to bring this man right on the side of the frame, and for that, I'm going to use the position or else I would do it through the preview screen. As you can see, two more key frames have been added. Now, let me explain to you the reason for these going up and going down of these lines right here. Now, when you increase the value, it can be the x-axis or the y-axis, these lines go up. And as you can see right here, the more I increase the values, the more the lines move upwards. Same things with these keyframes below, because the values are all negative. That is the reason why these lines go down. And because we didn't affect the rotation, we still have one keyframe for rotation, and we couldn't have the next one. But when you tweak around the rotation of this thing, you're going to see another keyframe is going to be added. Now, if the downs or the ups of these lines right here, if they are representing something, that same effect means that you can use these lines to transform your image or your video the way you want. For example, let me delete this second keyframe right here, and I'll do that just by deleting this keyframe right here. So let me say, I want to zoom on this very frame right here. I will just add a transform keyframe and then lift it up slightly. And as you can see, we have a zoom. But there's something wrong with this zoom. Why? The reason is we have zoomed only the x-axis, but we did not zoom the y-axis. So I can do the same thing right here and lift this keyframe of the y-axis, and we can do the same for the second pair of keyframes again. And now, as you can see, we have worked out the same zoom effect on the keyframing panel, the same way we could do on the transform panel. So now the next thing that I would like you to understand right here is you can work with one keyframe like this, or else you can work with multiple keyframes like this. For example, if I want to delete all of them, I have to select multiple of them and then hit delete. Now, let me show you the most important thing, which are the graphical controls right here. Generally, these controls the smoothness of your keyframes. So you can either use them by right selecting the keyframe or else you can use these graph symbols over here. For example, when you right select, you see the following options. Linear, Curve, Continuous Curve, Freeze, Ease In, Ease Out. Now the first one, which is the Linear, is the same as the default. 
It doesn't give any effect. And when you check on the graphical symbol of linear, you see it's a straight curve. It doesn't have any change of speed at any point. And these two following, which are the curve and the continuous curve, are almost the same thing. They all make the animation smooth and also the ease in and the ease out. For example, let me apply the continuous curve. You're going to see this continuous curve symbol right here on the keyframe. And when you preview, you find out that there's a smooth effect of animations. Now there is this other one which is called the freeze. So when you apply it on both ends of keyframes, it's going to make a direct cut when it reaches the second keyframe. So for your smooth animations, you can use this one and also you can do the ease in and the ease out. Generally, you do the ease in on the first keyframe and then you do the ease out on the last keyframe. Now the same way that we are animating our video clips and images, you can do the same thing on the titles, giving you the opportunity to make smooth title animations. I think this is all you need to know guys about keyframing panel in Filmora 13. So if this was helpful, go ahead and subscribe to this channel so that you won't miss my future episodes. So let's meet in the next one. Peace. Bye.